remember how Facebook went down in October of 2021, and not just Facebook, but many websites around the world were down for hours. Folks, I remember that. And, you know, it's that's how we make our living on the net. And when that goes down, you know, people don't buy books and DVDs. And anyway, I digress. That is how easy it is to shut down access to websites. There was another internet outage in Canada just recently where people could not even use debit cards. I remember that also. But internet may still be working. It's the domain names that do not work. This is why you cannot rely only on old school internet websites. You will simply be cut off from information during a societal collapse or an emergency. Thankfully, there is now a social media platform called Bastion that does not depend on legacy internet. I am active on Bastion. We just started this, and I ask that you would go, just go check it out. You'll see it right there. You can see it in front of you. It's under Marzuli. So now you can follow me there. You can download their app through a link below this video. It works like Bitcoin, speaking to computers around the world. So you can never be blocked from seeing me and other bloggers, other people who create content, as long as basic internet is running. Bastion is anonymous even has Tor network built in. So there's no need for a VPN. You can just follow me there. Bastion Devs announced that any followers who comments my videos on Bastion at least twice will get a gift of two pocket coin automatically on their Bastion profile. So this is pretty cool. That means you know, you're, you're earning money. Get the link below and be free from centralized internet. Let me show you how easy it is to register. Once you download the app, and install it, select Sign Up. You will simply create a nickname. Mine, of course, is Marzuli. No personal information is required. You can add an avatar to your profile. You will get a special private key, and it's really long, so you'll want to copy that and put it in your notes. This is your login and password all in one. You have to write down or copy it and put it in notes or whatever, but you have to write down this private key. Don't show it to anyone. It cannot be recovered if lost. So folks, I'm on Bastion now, um, just in case the unthinkable happens. We've stopped doing PPS report, and this is why we uh, have another, another site, and we're excited about that, and you can just go follow me right over there and uh, never miss another show. So follow me over to Bastion.com. That's Bastion.com. So Jesse, um, thanks so much for coming on the record. I admire your your boldness and your courage. Um, and you had an experience. Something happened to you, which was rather dramatic. Tell us about that, please. Uh, yes, sir. I was uh, partying with some friends in 1999. I was a senior in high school, and I was belligerent. And they couldn't talk any sense into me, and I left the, the party. We were waiting about psychedelics and uh, i'm very ashamed of that and but i left anyway in a horrible state and i rolled my car four times in dover in and mangled this little mitsubishi eclipse a 92 eclipse and uh i was laying there and the car was upside down when i came to and i saw the light under my hand that was the first thing i remember after the last thing I remember seeing the road in my face in the window as it smacked the pavement. And uh, I heard a voice. I don't know if it was audible. I don't know if it was in my head, but it was real. It said, Jesse, come out here and talk to me. And I, I was kind of bewildered. But this calm came over me. And I, I was like, well, that's, that's odd. Maybe they ran my tag. Maybe they know who I am at this point, but I highly doubt it. You know, I was like, somebody knows this is me. So I, I crawled out of the car. And before that, I was, I had a bowl of marijuana packed and, and my, I was selfish and I was trying to find that to toss the evidence. <laughs> you know, I was just in this panic fight or flight mode. And uh, as I climbed out, I saw this African American man, well dressed in a blazer, and he was driving a, a black BMW. And I thought, well, this is two or three in the morning. This is early. Maybe, you know, somebody else was out here. He's the first guy on the scene. And I said, oh, God, thank you. Thank you. He's like, Jesse, I'm here to keep you calm. And that that was weird, even in that state. You know, I was intoxicated, but that was weird that he said those <laughs> words. You let know, me, those let words. Me, wait, wait, wait. Let me, <laughs> let me just stop you right there. So this man, whom you've never met before, calls you by name. Yeah, out of the car. <laughs> That's red flag number one. Yeah. Red flag number two. 
He's yeah. well dressed, BMW, reg flag number three. I mean, not that you know, people don't aren't well dressed, but at three o'clock yeah. in the morning, it's like yeah. what? And too, like you said, too many three. red flags. Yeah, and then red, <laughs> red flag three. And this is not even in the first minute. I'm here to keep you calm. I mean, that's okay. So pick up the story there. Incredible. And I guess, you know, in my mind, I think God knew what I needed to hear. Well, I don't think that. I know that. You know, he always knows what we need, whether we do or not, or we think we do or not. And I'm talking to this man and this calm, this supernatural calm, this divine calm comes over me. And he says, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's odd because the one person I would really like to talk to right now would be a doctor. <laughs> you know, and I'm talking to this man. And uh, he says, it's okay. I said, will you, will you call 911? He says, it's okay. I've already called. The authorities are on the way. And I'm thinking, oh, God, yes. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. I'm alive. That's that's the first thought in my mind. It gives me peace after this doctor, this well-dressed doctor at 2, 3 in the morning. And uh, I crawl back in the car. I'm thinking, I got to find that bowl of weed. I got to toss that. I can't go to jail. I'm already a little bit drunk or a lot drunk. I, somehow I wasn't arrested. I don't understand this. Uh, but I, I, I crawled back in the car against his his judgment. He, he didn't want me to do that. He said, no, don't do that. So I crawled back in, and I'm feeling glass, just digging into my arms and my knees. And I'm looking for this bowl of weed, and then I hear another voice, and I see lights flashing, and this is the EMTs, and I know this by the, the lights. And uh, I couldn't find it. I gave up, you know. And uh, like I said, this was selfish. So that's all I cared about was not going to jail. And I crashed in someone's yard. And then I crawled back out. And that man was gone. His car was gone. And this was not, you know, even in the state, I know this was not, much time had not elapsed. Not enough for him to vacate, you know. If he was the one who found me on the sea, he wouldn't have left anyway. And my rationalization. And I crawl out, and these EMTs grab me, and they're like, you got to sit down. you got to sit down. And I said, I can't. I'm in shock at this point, you know, at least what I think was shock. And I popped my knee back into its socket. It was dislocated. And they said, you, did you just pop your knee back into its socket? I said, yes, sir. He said, you've got to sit down. And they pulled me into the ambulance. I said, where is that? That African-American man that I was talking to, the doctor, he said, what are you talking about? I said, he's the one who called you. He told me. I said, son, you, you crashed at 2 o'clock in the morning in the 1300 block of Shallowford Road in Chattanooga. There's no one out here except people whose yard you crashed in. They're the ones who called the authorities. And that man was gone like a vapor, just gone. And I knew at that moment that God had sent that man there to keep me safe, to keep me calm. I don't know if it was my guardian angel, but it was an angel, in my opinion. I've had other experiences not like that, but I know we have angels watching over us. They're here right now. They're, they're you know, among I, us all the I time. An, yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, I just think, uh, I just love the way they, uh, and, and this is biblical. I mean, I know that there's scoffers yes. out there. There always will be. <laughs> Paul tells us, that some of us have been entertained angels unawares. Now Absolutely. You, know, you can think of, you can, you can run with that. You know, I mean, 2000 years ago, roughly 2000, what does that mean? You know, uh, well, yeah. it means exactly what it says it means. And I believe you had an angelic encounter. I think it's incredible. Um, and, and you, you felt it yourself. You felt the supernatural calm come yeah. over you. Now what I want to drill into that a little bit. Tell sure. us what that felt like. That when he when he calls you by name, you come out and you feel this incredible incredible calmness come over you. What what did that feel like? What was that like? Well, first of all, when 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 I heard my name and the, given the situation, I knew that this was something was something bigger than me going on at this point. And, and I knew, but I just felt this weird like. You have to talk to this person. This is feeling like this is this is a must. You, you're not going to hide from this man who knows your name <laughs> after all this happened. So I crawled out, and as soon as I saw this, this man, this calm, like like I said, this calm came over me, and I think that was God. I, I felt like it was God telling me that it's going to be all right. Like you're going to probably be in some trouble, and you deserve that. And but you're going to walk away with your life and you don't need to worry about it. And, and but I, I mean, I did worry, but not like I would have had he, had he not provided this, 
the security. I, I can't really explain it any other way. I felt secure. Like I was in his grip. And, so, you know, we so, are always in his grip. Amen. So you go to, to you go to the hospital. Tell us what, pick up a story from there. You're in the ambulance and take you to the hospital. They did not take me to the hospital, but they checked me out. And I had, I busted my head up pretty good. And I still have a scar here on my nose and I'm 40 years old now. So, I mean, that was, that was a long time ago. I still have the scar. And, uh, but they took me to the hospital and I told my dad and I, my dad is my, oh, he's, he's my best friend. I love my father. Well, my dad, well, there's only one father, but I love my dad. And, uh, he believed me. He didn't question me. And, uh, you know, I, that's all I needed. I haven't told anybody else, maybe two other people before now. And, uh, that was all I needed was my dad to accept it. And he's always a son. I was an angel. Amen. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, I think all you're right. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Jesse, th thanks, thanks so much for coming on. Um, I'll, I'll give you the last word. Just close, close this out, please. I just want to thank you for, for your contribution to the ministry thank and you. what you've done. A lot, a lot of people don't understand, and and they they skepticize and, and they criticize what they don't understand. But I'm telling you right now, like your video yesterday, the, the doctor talking about the first, second, and third heavens that Paul described. These are all real. We are facing princes and principalities. This is all very real. And just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not true. Amen. And I just want to thank you for that. And I've been a fan for a long time, and I, I do appreciate what you do. And uh, I'll continue to be a fan until the Lord takes us home, and I see you in the air. <laughs> Might be sooner than we all think. We'll see. Thanks so much for coming so. on the record. I really appreciate God it. God bless you. God bless you, too.